Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors. I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Think unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Got a little bit different episode for you today. Had, had an interesting thing happen when I went on an artist date. And um, what I mean by an artist date is I, I, I just go out and get away from the studio, do something totally unrelated, and it helps me fill the well and get inspired again. So I went to a little seaside town, uh, Capitola, and uh, I saw this wonderful garden, and of course I love being at the beach. And there on the pier was this man fishing, and he had a red cap. And um, so I took his picture, and I thought, oh, I better ask permission. So I, I went up to him, and I talked to him, and, and said, you know what, I'd really love to do a painting of you. May, you know, may I have permission? And he said yes. And so I asked him his name, and he told me his name was St. Francis. And so... Uh, <laughs> that's that's the title of the painting and the whole thing has been a very uh, incredibly uh, uh, charged and spiritual experience for me and it's interesting when you go out and do something totally unrelated how it will really spark your creativity so what happened with this guy first I do the painting and then I'm inspired to write a book and even some music came out of it which you'll hear not not today but at another time but uh, it, it's great how it can all piggyback off each other. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I, wa I, I am so thrilled to be getting all the emails and letters and, and, uh, and Twitter uh, and Facebook. All, all the communication from you guys is just awesome. And it's really encouraging to hear people who are going through um, difficult times and yet they're, they're painting before work. They're writing when they get home they're doing a sculpture people are creating whenever they can with whatever they have and and it's really exciting i got a, a email and first uh, actually a, a painting in the mail from a viewer in santa cruz california um, joe calici he sent me the most beautiful beautiful abstract for valentine's day i'm going to bring that in on the next show when we do an abstract but i'm just so excited that you guys are actually creating it's awesome okay so what am i going to do today well this is saint francis and he's done <laughs> so i'm not going to touch him today but what i but, but well that's not quite true i'm going to actually put some liquid over the top of him he is dry to the touch. I'm not going to varnish it, but I, I do use liquid. You know that I use that when I paint. And parts of it are flat, and parts of it are shiny. And I need to bring the whole thing back to life. So what I'm going to do is pour some liquid right on the top of him and kind of even out his little face. So how do you do that? Well, I'm going to take him off the easel. And I'll place them flat. It's a lot easier to do it when it's flat. Let's see, we'll move them over here. And I'm going to take some straight medium. I don't know if this is enough. We'll see. I brought another bottle. Okay. And I know this freaks people out sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I'm going to pour this right over the top of the painting. So I'm just going to kind of drizzle some here and there. Now you don't want to do this if it's if it's uh, wet because you will have smeared and, and messed up everything. And then you take a big brush. Oh God, I love how it brings the color out. 
all the color that was sunk that had just disappeared comes back. Now, you want to do this, whew, <laughs> you want to do this in a well-ventilated area. Um, so I was leaning over this and realized that that's not a good idea. <laughs> Might not be able to finish the show. Um, it's, there, there's quite a few. It's, it's the only time I use anything that's, um, that's really uh, uh, not good to inhale. So I'm just going to take the brush, get most of them done here so that he's not dripping. Ooh, I got a brush hair. We want to get rid of that, especially a big one like that. So I'm going to take a paper towel. Now, typically I would use a sponge brush on this. I didn't have one that big, and I didn't want little, little brush strokes. All right, so I got most of it done, and what I'm going to do is move him, kind of finish him off on the easel. So I just wanted him flat so you could get a good idea, and this way I'll be able to find any brush hairs that got in here. So I'm going to pick him up carefully because he's very wet. Put him right over here. And you can see right there is a huge huge hair. That's got to go. All right. So I'm going to finish him off. I'll put this here. Just get the rest of the edges. I see another one here. I'm just sticking my hands in there now. See how his color is just brought back to life as soon as you it really evens things out. And I'm doing a little lighter stroke here over his face. There we go. And then I'm just going to peek on the sides to make sure I got it all. There's some I missed. I can tell I missed some right down here. I'm looking for brush hairs because those are harder to get out later. Whoop! Forgot he was up there and I dropped him. That happens all the time. Okay. Just get the bottom. And now I'm just looking to make sure there aren't any huge brush hairs there. Yeah, I think that's good. Make sure I don't have any strokes that I don't want. And I think I'll finish with a f sponge brush just to, just to see if there's anything, any loose hairs that I don't want to pick up. I'm going to go with his little face hair there. Actually, it's not a very little face. We've got to talk about sense of scale here. Oh, there's one. Don't want that right in his eye. He's, he's kind of large. And um, when I go to do a painting of a portrait, there's a sense of scale that, that feels comfortable to me. And I don't know if it's because the older I get, I need reading glasses when I work on something small, but I think it has more to do with the energy. And um, I have a lot of it, and so if I paint especially a face like this, any smaller than this, it, um, I feel restricted. So pick a sense of scale that really works for you. I think my portraits, when they're done at this size, really, really come out at their best. Um, I, I can do somewhat smaller, but if I had to do a whole figure, a whole body on something this small, um, 
it's hard for me. So you're going to find what's comfortable for you and just work with it. None of it's wrong or right. It's just whatever works for you. I'm looking here to see if I see any more. Uh, nope. No, I don't see any more brush hairs. I think that's it. I'm just going to let them go. I'm going to throw away this. This, you know, this was a cheap brush, and I used it just for the liquid, and I'm going to throw it out. You can't be painting with things where the brushes, the hair is falling out on your canvas. Okay, so I'm going to move this over. Nope, I see one more. Now, he inspired an entire series. So here I am, I'm in Capitola, I see this guy, got to paint him. I go home and, I, and, and between him and this woman I met at the garden, I came up with this great story. Oh my God, I've got to write a book. So I start to write a book. And then all of a sudden, words for a, a song came out. So I, the, so I have one window open in, in Word. And I open another one. And all of a sudden, the lyrics just poured out for the song. I quickly recorded it and um, was so on fire that by the next day, I had the whole song done. So it's, it's amazing how these things just kind of snowball on each other. And so I wasn't, you know, I, it's kind of like a good book. You, you know, you read a good book and, and um, you know, it's over and you're just not done. <laughs> you want some more. So I am starting, so there's more to this series. So I thought, you know, I really like the shot I got of him before, um, before I got close to him. And so this was actually taken at a distance. And uh, I got some liquid up here. It was taken at a distance. And um, I cropped it, but I love, and here he was looking out to sea. It was just, um, it, it was an amazing, I love the photograph in and of itself. He's looking out to sea, don't even know what he was thinking or talking about. Turns out he grew up near where I did in, in Almaden, in, in uh, Almaden Valley in California. Um, but anyway, he, you, you never know who's going to inspire you and where it's going to send you. So I decided to start this one. Well, normally on the show, you see me block in a painting or you see in the middle. And I thought, you know what, let's show how I finish a painting. And um, that's a little trickier. I don't do that too often because what happens is I go into the studio and I think, you know what, today I'm going to finish this painting. And I work on it for two or three hours and it's not done. And, and I think, okay, the next day I go in, today I'm <laughs> going to finish this painting. And I work on it some more and it's not done till it, you know, you, you just don't know. You could be close for two weeks, um, or I could anyway. I could be close to being done for a couple of weeks, and, and finally it's, it's over, and you can just feel that it's done. Um, but I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could try to finish it today on the show? That would be awesome. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so this is, uh, I would have to say, oh, how many, how many times at the canvas? Probably... Uh, four or five, two, two to three hour sessions at the canvas to get it to this point. Uh, there's a lot of color in his face, even just blocked in here. But I really want to keep it fairly mysterious, fairly loose. So one of the things about Liquin, if, if you put that over the top, it would bring out all this color. But I'm not ready to do that at this point. So where am I going to start with this? You know, in order for the smoke to show up in the background, uh, I would definitely, you needed the dark underneath for this smoke to emerge. So I think I'll put some of that over the top here. I want to lighten his hat here, show just a little bit of more contrast. And one of the ways, if, you, if you're working from a reference photo and you're not sure where to go or what it needs to do, one of the things that I'll do is I'll put it on a black and white copier and I'll look at it in just black and white and that helps me take a look and say, okay, I'm just looking at the values. I'm just looking at what's dark and what's light and I'm going to really punch those up. And so that's a, it's a good guide to get you started. And of course, for me, the ultimate end is the color, but, but uh, you know, I, I usually like to work with both. All right, so where am I going to start here? Well, let me get rid of this. And I thought, you know, let's highlight, let's start making some separation here. So I'm going to highlight little bits of his jacket. Um, I can tell you right now, I don't like, you know, you, you take a look at things that, and you analyze them and you say, okay, 
I don't like how this is connected here. It, it looks like his, it looks funny. <laughs> there needs to be, this whole thing needs to be dark so that it's fairly seamless. So I'll probably just glaze over that. Um, so we're going to do a lot of futzing, a lot of little bit all over the place. And um, I guess what else is new? We don't usually are all over the place. All right, so where would I start? I'd grab some, you always start with the thing you know you can do and you sneak up on what scares you, right? That's, that's my Shannon painting. So I'm going to grab some violet. And you know what? Somebody asked, you know, looked at, at my, the painting I just had up and said, gosh, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're not afraid of color. And I said, you know, there, there are things that I'm afraid of, but color is definitely not one of them. All right, so I'm going to grab some Carbazol Violet. I'm thinning that with some medium. And I'm going to make this whole thing a little darker under his ear. Right here. And you know what? I, I'm going to make it all the way down to the... There. So it actually looked red by the time it hit his neck, which is great. If you're out there fishing, you're going to get a red neck. This was actually New Year's Day. It was just a beautiful day out there at the beach. OK, and so just add a little bit of, of violet there, and that really works. I think I'll add a little bit of straight blue. These are not traditional colors that you'd think to, to use for somebody's hair or neck. Um, why do they work? Well, the purple is very transparent, so it makes a great glaze. And it's warm, so it's great on the skin. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue. It's cool. That's going to be part of his hair. And you don't know that it's hair. You just know that it's a dark shape. I'm going to leave that. And while I have the blue out, might as well add a little more. You should have seen the look he gave me when I said I wanted to paint him. He, he just couldn't quite believe it. But my god, he just, he was perfect. He is perfect. OK, so I'm glazing a little blue right here. And it needs to be a little darker. So I think I'll add a little violet into that. And I know it's light over here, but I'm going to, I'm going to, this is where, this is one of those deals where you know in the reference photo it's doing something different, right? There's light here, there's light hitting here. I don't really, I don't want attention called to this area. So in order to, you, you create a diversion. <laughs> you, you want to point to your center of interest, you want to point to the things that are working. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tone that down. There we go. Just right up here. All right, so I don't have that much left on my brush, and I'm just going to kind of fade it, fade it in here. Now we could use a little pick-me-up right here. So I know just what I want to put there. I'm going to grab a little bit of uh, thalo turquoise and some white. And I'm not kidding. Just a tiny bit on your knife is all you need. If you add a lot to this, it totally takes over. It's a very powerful color. And if you mix a lot of these with white, you'll get a good idea of, of what's going to take a lot to, um, you know, you could, you could use a whole tube of white to make something light if you're not careful. So, so it's good to start off with just a little bit first. I speak from experience because I tend to overdo. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And there are things that I know, like I know you're supposed to start off with a little bit first, and then I forget and do them anyway. So when that happens, and you get this pile that's way too dark, take half of it, move it over, or even more, and then add white to a small pile, and then you'll save yourself. You won't be wasting paint. It's better, you know, especially in, in difficult times, and, and everybody's trying to save some money, it's better to be frugal in that way when you're mixing than to use cheap paint. Use the good stuff. Just be careful how you use it. All right, so phthalo turquoise. Just a little dab there. Got some separation. I like that. And a straight line would just look terrible, so I'm breaking it up. Even if it looks like it's a straight line, don't do it. All right, I'm going to go right up here, break that up. All right, so it does, it does need to be a little bit lighter, and I can fill that in with maybe just a little bit more turquoise, and I'm going to move this over. I love this color. And just kind of blend them together. There we go. And there could be some light here. I still haven't decided whether I want to do it, but I'm going. I'm going for it. Maybe a little, little turquoise. Now his jacket in real life is gray, but you know that was no fun. All right, that's cool. I'm gonna leave that alone. Believe it or not, a little bit of light right here. And let's see, what can I do to this edge here? Maybe just a slight, slight bit right up here. Okay, I don't, I want this kind of uh, grayed, so I'm not going to call attention to that too much. I'm going to leave that intentionally mysterious. That's good. And then as far as this edge here, this is confusing, so I'll give this a little clarity. And I think this shape here, even though I saw this in the, in the picture, compositionally this shape bothers me. You've got this triangle here. So I'm going to break that up a little bit, even though it's not how it is in the picture. All right, so let's see, what could we do? We could just make it squiggle a little bit. The good thing about the triangle is you gotta, you got to be, be cautious of where things are pointing. If this shape was pointing down off the canvas, that, w that wouldn't be so good. Um, the fact that it's pointing up is good. I just didn't like that, that linear nature of that. So I'm going to tone that down a little bit, clean up this edge. There we go. That's happy. Add a little blue back in here. And I think we'll come back to his jacket in a little bit. I want to work on some other areas. All right, so I'm going to lower this down just a little bit. Just slightly, and work on his hat. His hat definitely, you could either use a, a it's based in, I j just really needs some of the refinement. I decided, you know, in the reference photo, there was this plaid. 
And when I went through painting the first St. Francis, I put in the plaid and I went crazy and I threw all that in. It, it looked terrible. Um, it was too busy for me. What I really like about this is that this is quiet, this is quiet, so this face can pop. And I also wanted to keep this a little bit busy and very mysterious in the background. So, so I intentionally left this very simple. These two areas are very simple. This is simple so that you're really drawn to that area there. Again, it's, it's, uh, it's the attention that you want to put on certain things. Okay, so what do I want to do with this hat? Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to use a different brush. This one, what was wrong with this? That's, that would be a good lesson. Okay, this one was too small. I'll show you. It is too small and too stiff. So um, I needed something that was looser and bigger. So I found it. And I'm going to, let's see, just glaze a little bit of, we're doing a lot of glazing tonight at the end. And I'm reinstating some of the darks. Okay, so where is some of the dark? Right under here. And where else is it dark? Right here. I'm using the violet on this. Now I'm going to continue to glaze, but I want to use a, a lighter color, so I'm going to grab, this was carbazole violet, now I'm going to grab some quinacridone violet with my same dirty brush. And this part of the hat Oh, it's a nice red. This part of the hat, see I get distracted, <laughs> get lost in the reds. This part of the hat is cooler, but darker, so I'm going to use this red. It's also tr transparent. I love quinacridones because they are transparent pigment. You don't even need medium in many cases with the quinacridones. Okay. Also, I want to point direction, point things over in that area as well. So I'm going to darken this area too. Okay, so that's starting to take shape. Now I'm going to grab it. Uh, well, I think I better wipe my brush first. I'm going to grab yet another red. You can't have too many reds. Okay, we have this pink which is definitely not going to work, and that's because it's not, well, I could use it with uh, some medium, but I would need to, it's not necessarily a, a good glazing color, but I love this pearl and scarlet. And I'll use that on the top of the hat. And one of the things I tried is, you know, in the, in the uh, photo, and it's a lot lighter right up at the very top. But I wasn't sure I wanted to do that because, again, then that calls attention to this area here, and I really wanted to bring everything down. So, so even though it shows that it's a lot lighter, I'm not sure I want to do that. And how do I know that? Because I tried that before, and I didn't like it. But I'm going to push it because we're on the show. <laughs> and how are you going to know if you don't try things? Okay. 
And what about that part of his hat? Oh, it's not that light. I probably should have a little smaller brush, but no, I didn't switch. Okay, now the color I want to use for this part of the hat is not transparent, and I'm going to go for it anyway. It's cad red light. Could use it with some medium that will add to some of the transparency. It's warm enough. If I add white to this, it's going to be pink and hmm, lack the impact that I would like it to have. In other words, it'd be wimpy as hell. <laughs> we can't have that on this painting. This guy is too strong a guy. Okay, there we go. That's happy red. Okay. Now, here's, here's the choice that you make. Do you, do you add the light at the very top and go for it? Well, I'm going to stand back and look at it. Yeah, it needs something else. I'm going for it. All right, here we go. Here's how I see it. It's either going to work and I'm going to love it, or it's going to look bad. <laughs> but you know what? Unless you give it a shot, you don't know what you might create. So I'm going for it. All right, so I am going to add a little bit of white, but I don't want it to be wimpy, so I'm adding white to the cad red light, and I'm adding a little orange to warm it up. And I think I need to, I'm already going to change brushes because that's not going to work. Let me just try the edge. We'll just play with the edge a little bit and see if that's going to work. Yeah, it's working. Okay, so it's lighter right up here. Once I get away from the edge, I'll use a bigger brush. Maybe not. The added strokes might add some interest, so a little bit of light right here. Okay, now I'll grab a little bit bigger brush. I need more paint. We're not glazing anymore. We're working wet on wet. And I'm just going to do a little bit more of this and then move on to his face. We're going to work all over here and see, try not to stay too long in one place. There we go. By using a bigger brush, you're not going to have the, a million brush strokes. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Right now I wanted big, broad strokes. And this is one of those cases where you just, you know, I hear a little dream police in my head going, stop! <laughs> Stop! So, um, so I am. I'm listening. I really do hear people talking to me when I'm painting. <laughs> Probably shouldn't admit that, but I do. Okay, so, um, you know what, this one little area in here could just, you know, I just got to play with this one little area and then I will stop, but I'm not going to play with that, that lighter part. Okay, so I'll add a little bit of cat light just, just in here to add a little interest. And sometimes you just got to put a stroke down and stop again. And um, that's easier said than done. Okay, so that added enough so that it looked like things are happening. There's some movement in there. It's not just so stiff. Okay, where do we want to go next? Well, let's, we're sneaking up to his face. Um, we could glaze his pipe, make that warmer. I like that. And it's maybe with a combination of uh, some violet and some, I don't know, maybe I'll wait to do his pipe till, I, till we see what we do to his face. Yeah, I'll mess with his face first. Okay, 
So now I'd step back again, take a look at the painting, and say, you know, where, where are we? What, what can we do to liven him up? Really, less is going to be more here. Uh, I want to add, he's backlit, so it may be that I need to add this warmth here from the pipe so that I know what to do. Everything's about relationships. And if I start playing with his face right now, um, that may not be a good thing because the whole relationship's going to change when I warm up this background. I see I got some red hair. Um, so, uh, so I changed my mind. <laughs> going to work on just a little bit of this smoke hair, smoky effect, and that way I'll s know what I need to do to his face. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to grab. I've done I've done some glazing and some just wet on wet. Uh, in this case, I'm going to grab some white, some cad yellow deep. That didn't look like it did much anything, did it? And, you know, I really, again, want to thank you for getting on Twitter and giving me painting ideas and, and uh, show ideas. And, and for Joe Colici, who really wants me to do an abstract, it's coming on an episode soon. We will go for it. And if you don't know about, if you've never watched a show and you've never heard about Joe Colici, you, 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 you know, it's just, it's, it's amazing. The man had never painted until he was 80 years old when he started painting. And he called me up and he said, I've been watching your show and I'm turning 80 and I need to know what kind of paint to buy. So, so I told him and uh, um, he's 84 now and he's still painting. I mean, that is just so cool. It is never too late to start. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of cad red light and we had a little bit of cad yellow deep. And that's too much close to what I had, but maybe it'll work. We'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warm it up just a little because it's just a little too cold for me. But I've got to be careful. I don't want it too close to, that, uh, too close to the flesh color there. Yeah, that was too much. I went overboard. Imagine that. So I'm just going to wipe my brush just a little bit. Get back to where I was. I'm doing a circular motion here. I'm not, I, you know, I thought about, okay, how do I approach the smoke? Do I paint every little whiff that goes up? And uh, that just made me tired. So I'm just going to scribble. And besides, really cool, mysterious things happen when I scribble. Things I didn't plan. Things I couldn't have planned. People start seeing all kinds of great little shapes in there. I'm going right over his face. We'll, we'll separate that later. But I don't want the brush strokes to look like they ran away when it went to his face because that smoke was just merging with him. Okay, we'll billow some out here. I'll get some straight white, something I don't normally do. Add a little interest, something different. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. This is right under his nose. How far does that go? Just a little bit. And so it's thicker right around here. More opaque, heavy duty stuff coming up here. I don't know if he ever caught anything. Thought it was a beautiful day out, too. I was just glad he let me take his picture. Here he was out there fishing, and I was intruding. 
He was really nice to me. Somebody was asking, do you ever paint on location? Um, yeah, but I also really, really am a studio painter, and I love to paint in my studio, so I do both. OK, so we've got more smoke emerging. I, th I think we could add just a few more billows and move on to his face and go back to that later. I want to make sure that we do talk about that. Straight up. Less paint on the brush as I go up, go up, and the smoke is dissipating, so that makes sense. Things do need to make sense in some obscure way. They've got to make sense. OK, I don't like that line. That's got to go. And there's too much blue. There's like a blue line here right by his nose. I love the blue. There are times when there's just this passage that's just incredible, and, and you're like, oh, I love how it, do it does that. But you know what? If it doesn't work for the painting, and if it's not good for the whole team, it's got to die. And that's sometimes hard. People say, oh, I love how I did that. And sometimes you have to be willing to let go of certain beautiful passages sometimes for the greater good of the whole piece. And that's just how it is. All right, stop. Um, I'll blend this here and then start uh, playing with his nose. <laughs> OK, so we've got some smoke going on there. That's light against that. Let's turn around and see what that's doing. OK, so now, already, that made this much richer than it was. And I would have played with that for a while, and it might not have needed to be touched in, in certain areas. OK, so what do I want to do? Um, I'll talk about first, before I do anything else, about some of the nice neutrals that are here. Um, I'm not known for, for my neutrals in my work, uh, but uh, I've got some great grays. And I achieved those with blues and greens. I put this green right under his hat because it was a complementary color. And I love these little color surprises. They really help. Um, liven the painting up. OK, so let's, let's play with his mustache. I love mustaches. And um, uh, so a lot of the men that I paint have them. OK. I think it needs to be warmed up. So we'll do some cad yellow deep. And a little bit of cad yellow light. And I don't want that to be too close to there. That's, that's not. OK. All right, so where's the light? He's got some light right here. Just going to add these. Oh, I need more, more medium. Now, people would be tempted to get uh, a little tiny double O brush and, and do every little strand of hair, and that's not how it, how it works. You just do the big shapes. And besides, there's only like light right here. There. That's helping that pop. Now I'm going to complement that with a little bit of blue that I was using before. Maybe, uh, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue on my dirty brush. I'm brush mixing here. Let's see how this works. I'm going to start right from where it grows out of his face. It's not dark enough. OK, let's go back. A lot of color in his little mustache. 
Yeah, I can see some, there's just going to need to be some violet. And I'm actually killing some of the light that I just put in, and that's okay. It's all part of the building. If you can do it in one stroke, great, but you know what? It doesn't always work that way. Oops. <laughs> I might have gone overboard with the violet, but that's all right. Okay, now I just need to add the light back in and maybe leave it alone. I think this needs to be just dark right under here. Yeah, okay, now that I add the light back in, it'll be good. And what we're going to do is just move little, little bits and sections here to just pop, make him pop. You know what, I might even grab some straight white, something I don't normally do. Yeah, I just did. There, that's better. I'm going over where it was. It's like you have to do it and kill it sometimes before it works. That's good. We'll leave that alone for now. I want to work on some other areas of his face and not spend, I could spend all day on his mustache, which, you know, just because I like working on that, it would bore the heck out of you. So where else? Let's put in some sideburns, add a little bit of the light right here. Same way we did the mustache. So when I initially block this in, you're just seeing color notes. And these are just smaller color notes, the same principles. And no, I'm not doing a gray. This is actually that uh, phthalo turquoise and white with a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue in there. And how far does that go? It goes pretty far. And then I'll just add a little ultramarine blue over the top. Ooh, I'm going to grab some more green, just because it would be fun. OK, that's, that's the only reason. Right over the top. It, I mean, of course, it, it uh, It is a compliment to the red. Okay. Now I'm going to step back and say, okay, what, what's next? What do I want to work on that would really kind of punch him up? Ooh, that didn't sound good, did it? Well, let's, um, since I have this on my brush, I just want to throw in, you know, I'm tempted to throw in a little bit of hair down here. Because, okay, this is, this is the deal. I'm, I was so tempted to throw in just a little bit of something here to show, because I know that it's hair. Well, that would just not work in the painting. I mean, I spent all this time trying to quiet this down so that nobody would really pay much attention to this area, move the center of interest over here, and yet I'm wanting to play with this area. So this is, these are the kinds of struggles that you go through, or at least I do. Okay, so I'm going to give him some red, some color to his face, some passion. The, the, uh, he had an amazing amount of energy. So, so we're getting the red out again. This time I'll be a little, little gentler with it. Let's see. I'm looking for shapes. What, you know, what, what, sh what was this shape doing? And, wh and what kind of red do I want? Well, he was in the shade here, so I think I'll get a little cooler red. Maybe... Maybe a little rose, but I got to add some cad red light to it because I just have to. Okay, so there's some, whew, yeah, let's add a little red right there. That's just fun. And then right on this part of his mustache, 
maybe I can cool it down a little. So um, I won't go there yet because I'm going to need to cool it down. And I don't want to cool it down yet. OK. All right, now I can move over. I want this to be a seamless merge here, fairly seamless. So I'm taking the red and I'm going right over the top of both of the mustache and, and his face here. He's got a little line there. That's good. That helps separate that. And you know what? He needs some warmth in his neck. That's just too cold down there. So I'm, I'm just going to grab some straight red. Oops. OK, that was pinker than I wanted, so I'm take. Oh, wow. Look what happened. OK, I had paint on my, on my now, you know, I, when I first started doing this, that would have freaked me out. Um, but you can't cry over smeared paint, you know? You just, <laughs> you just, you just got to laugh. So um, the little cool thing is, is he's kind of dry under there. So I'm just going to take some liquid on my paper towel and erase him. Did I get it all off? No. Now that's when beginning students usually blow a gasket. <laughs> they go out to the car and get something to drink or something. But um, no, it, it all is not lost. OK, so most of it came off. And sometimes you just have to say, what the heck, and try again. This is one of them. OK, so I'm going back to the red. Because that was my objective. OK, ooh, hey, see, this was a happy accident. All right, a little pink there. Let's see how, make sure there's no white sneaking in. Ooh, that's better. See, I also like how this pink is interacting with the blue as opposed to the orange that I had previously. All right, I'm going to throw that right up into his neck, right up into this dark area. Let's get a little bolder with the red. And speaking of the red, OK, the guy's ears are, are redder than than um, typically redder than women's ears because their capillaries are closer to the surface. So if you, if you paint them way red, it's, it's really, uh, it's pretty much what's going on. So, um, but if I just leave this here and don't have any connection, it won't work. So I'm just going to glaze a little bit right here. Where do I see some of that? I'm just scribbling. Don't be afraid to scribble over your painting. OK. So, got to tone this down a little bit. There's some red right in here. And you know what? I, I'm going to glaze over this whole ear, this area anyway. I don't want it to stick out. We don't have a ton of time left in the show, so what would I do to, to further punch it up? Well, you know what? I'd give him a little more red in his nose just because. It's going to be red if you're out there fishing a lot. And how else could I clean that up? I'm going to blend it a little. And there are a couple other areas that traditionally, oh, I've got to clean the tip of that nose off. <laughs> up. <laughs> Doing surgery here. OK, there are a couple areas that typically you know, the nostril is a dark area, so I'm going to punch that up a little bit. And also, he looks pretty spooky with the white. You know, in the picture, you just see the whites of his eyes here, and that's just a little spooky. So I'm going to fix that. We can't have that. All right, so let's, let's uh, add a little dark under his nostril, and it's not going to be black. Uh, I think I'll use some violet. A little bit right there. Yeah, I went overboard, but I'm just going to leave it. And then um, I'm going to darken this up a little. And 
grab a little bit of blue. Just shove that in there. And I'll leave that alone for now. And I'm just going to do one quick little glazing before we're done tonight. This is something that I wanted to try just to see if, um, how it would work. And um, so this is one of those brave things where you put yellow right over the top. Oof. And there was some yellow right on this edge here. And you combine that with some violet. There. Warm that puppy right up, a little bit of red in the middle, and you got it. Oops. Now I smeared some paint over there in the wrong place, and that's another one of those where, you know what, you just got to say, whoops, and fix it later. So how would you, how would you clean that up? Again, a little bit of liquid or medium, and just wipe it off. So what's the deal with this painting, or what do I want you to get? We didn't... We didn't finish it, but what I'd like you to take away from this, this one, and I might as well bring this guy back up if I can, is to not be afraid of color. Not be afraid to just go out there, throw it all, throw it all down, and see what happens. Um, let, let them inspire you. Uh, and this is a case where, yeah, I thought I might be able to get it done, but I could be working on this for several days and it would never happen. So pick the scale that's fun for you. Pick a subject that, that you fall in love with. And go ahead and give your own walls some soul. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Shannon Grissom.